folks, thanks for tuning in to another video. I've got another Lord of the Rings action figure review from Diamond Select Toys today. It's the Uruk Hai. I just picked this up this, this week. It arrived. Um, I did get two, so I'm excited to share sort of both variations of the figure in terms of, you know, different ways to display it, different heads, uh, different weapon sets, a um, couple of different hands. Um, and yeah, the ability to remove uh, just a couple of the parts of the armor so you can differentiate a couple of the guys from the army, from the Urukai army, and have a couple of display options, which is really great. So without further ado, let's bust them open and have a look. All right, folks, here are the two Urukai warriors as they stand in front of you. I've got different head on each. Um, I've sort of given, taken some of the armor pieces. Of, we'll go through this, but basically, you know, each one comes with an alternate head, so, you know, that's why I've displayed them that way. They each come with the shield, which is a really nice looking piece. The kind of cool thing is because of the nature of the way these are painted, um, you know, there are some sort of slight variations just to the paintwork. You can sort of just sort of see the different lines of the sculpt, but the way it's sort of painted, they do look a little bit different. I thought we'd like to just focus on one for the moment. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, just a simple, um, well, I guess the Lertz figure that I just reviewed last week is more more likely to be a repaint of this as opposed to the other way around. Um, you got the sort of the strap on the back there, which is cool. Just nice, and then a handle. You can tuck the arm through and have him gripping on the handle, which is great. We'll give you a look at the spear that this one is holding. That's a quite a big piece, as you can sort of see. It stands quite tall, but yeah, this is this is nice as well. All right, it's just. Don't want to be nice to me at the moment. That's all right. A little bit of flickery there, but that's nice. And obviously the uh, the sword here, which is was again reused for alerts. But again, I talked about the whole industrialization of Isengard and Saruman's army of Urukai, and you know these are just basically just quickly forged pieces of bashed up steel there's no elegance to them whatsoever you move move the boys out of the way so it may the camera may focus on what I'm trying to show so yeah that's it's nice nice piece and each of them have these sort of removable armor parts, which you pop, once you pop off the hands, you can put these up on the sleeves, like so. A little bit of flex there, so it allows for the hand movement. But I think I'll be having them both sort of armed up with the armor, just for the purpose of the video. I thought I'd remove it off one of them. And then naturally get a pair of hands. So you get the open hands. I find this is good for, you know, once you've got it through the shield, you can sort of get a bit of a bit of an easier grip than trying to get the uh, closed sort of hand around around that. It just sits in there a little bit more relaxed, which is nice. And then yeah, as you can see, each figure has. Just the sort of gripping hands, which is fine. So let's let's take a look at the uh, unarmored head. A part of me wants to get, you know, the spare one and do the uh, do the two towers bit with the with the head on the spike and mold a mold a tongue hanging out of it. After the Rohirrim attack on the edge of Fangorn Forest, I reckon that'd be a cool little display piece. 
But yeah, as I said, just due to the uh, the nature of the way these figures are painted, you know, there's some slight difference in in paint, particularly just because of the wash. There's like a like a dark wash over the top, just to give that skin, you know, that sort of dirty, almost slimy look. You know, it's got quite a quite a nice deep little bit of black there that's sort of pulled in there. But overall, the sort of the base paint applications are, are you know. They're pretty much the same, but yeah, just the different, different washes over the top. Just it's a little bit difference in appearance, but but as for the armor, it looks nice, nicely, uh, nicely sculpted actually, and the the way it's been painted and you know it does it looks like you know banged up steel. You know they've been sort of pressed and whacked and hit into shape and then the sort of the chain mail pattern underneath really nicely done and the hair on the hair on the figure sculpted really nicely too so I've got beautiful beautiful long hair belong in a shampoo commercial <laughs> I imagine their hair would stink honestly <laughs> I reckon it had filthy, filthy, dirty hair. But yeah, the, the sort of wash through the chainmail looks really, really nice too. Even the belts, you know, the way they're sculpted, even the holes in the belt there for the pins, that's really nice. You know, it's just a detail you wouldn't expect, but it's good. And sort of weathering on the skin of the arms, down the legs. And the boots down below. Yeah, just just nicely sculpted details. That's what I love about these these particular figures. They're just pretty damn nice. Now I won't go into it too much detail with this guy. We'll just take a look at his head because the rest of it's more or less the same. Again, nicely sculpted. Slightly different. Again, just in the paint applications, but... Again, you got that beautiful Uruk, Uruk high hair coming out the back. Now they are separate. Separately sculpted pieces, though they're different, so that's cool. I thought they may have found a way just to sort of reuse, reuse the hair for the uh, helmeted head. But I love, I love in the two towers. You know when the battle for Helm's Deep is about to begin, and you've got these, you know these soldiers standing in the rain, and you know they're snarling and growling in this. You can sort of see the steam coming out of their breath and the rain's hitting them. That's such an awesome moment. Just absolutely terrifying. This brutal army. So again, I'll show you the arms here. With those sort of gauntlets on. Or braces, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, really, really happy with this this figure, these figures. I will sort of display them alternative alternate appearances. Let's just sort of see how if I can do this on camera without looking like a complete goober. <laughs> you know what? It might actually be easier. Pop the hand out. I said might. I, there's no guarantee that this is going to work. And just sort of pop the hand in. There we go. You know, I could. I'll, I'll rejig it, but once it's sort of down there, I'll probably more than likely switch it over to the other side so it's got that sort of cut out bit there. Oh. 
And then with the sword in hand, you have another hulking brute of an Uruk. Oh, these guys are going to look great with Lurts standing between them. I'd love to see, you know, I'd love to see, I don't know, I've, my main thoughts were like the Berserker from Helm's Deep. The one that, uh, you know, runs in with the bomb. That would be awesome. And also, I think the one, they did a figure of him from Toy Biz. I'm trying to think of his name. Um, he was part of the, he was the leader of the Urukai after Lurts. They were tracking, they were running back to Isengard with Merry and Pippin. I feel like his name was like Shagrat or something. I could be wrong. We do meet some orcs throughout the story that there were some interesting names. I could be getting confused with the, with a couple of the other orcs, but... Never mind, it's all good. Or as Ugluk. Ugluk? I can't remember. But yeah, in terms of some more Orokai, yeah, I would not complain about sort of seeing some more variations. Um, you know, use the same base figure, but get something else out there. Not being the sort of Diamond Select, being the, the sort of toy company they are, they're sort of just, you know, they're very sort of sparing with their releases. It's not a mass market retail sort of toy line even now I'm pretty I'm really happy with how the toy with that with this line's going um, yeah I love these figures it's it's nice to have them um, but yeah definitely love to hear your thoughts down below drop a comment see you downstairs for a uh, for a discussion about Lord of the Rings and um, yeah, hope the next sort of wave comes out soon. I think it's uh, Saruman the White and uh, Samwise Gamgee. I believe they're they're next on the slate, and then after that, I believe it'll be Merry Pippin and Gandalf the White. So yeah, what other characters would you like to see? You know, sooner rather than later in this line. I'd... Personally, I think the Berserker Uruk would be awesome. I think Aemir, Eowyn. I don't, it's endless, really. King Aragorn would be sweet. Faramir. Just bring them all on. Just do it. <laughs> Alright, folks. We'll see you on the next one.